Hey guys, I know that today's lesson is kind of challenging, so I wanted to give you guys just a couple pointers on working through particularly page 336. So let's just start at the top here. It says, tell how many equal parts are between zero and one, then write the fraction labels above the equal parts. So let's zoom in. And I'm looking between zero and one, like they said. And just like yesterday, we're gonna see how many equal parts they've split it into. So I have one, two, three. It looks like we're working with thirds. So this is zero thirds, one third, two thirds, and three thirds, which is the same as one whole. So it's asking you to tell how many equal parts. My answer here is three. Then write the fraction label above the equal parts. So you can see that's me writing the fraction labels above the equal parts, okay? Let's look down at number seven and look at this one. So I'm gonna change my color here and let's count to see how many equal parts are between zero and one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like I have six equal parts, so zero six one six, two six, three sixths, four sixths, five sixths, and one whole is six sixths. Now let's look at number eight. So between zero and one, I'm noticing just by looking at it that I'm gonna have a little extra equal parts here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine equal parts on that one. So nine equal parts. So I've got zero ninths, one ninth, two ninths, three ninths, four ninths, five ninths, six ninths, seven ninths, eight, ninths and one whole is nine ninths. So those are the first few. Let's go down now. Now they're asking you to compare greater than or less than making each of the statements true. So four thirds. Ooh, it looks like my first number line up here is in thirds. So let's count four thirds. One, two, three, four. So I'm right here. That's my four thirds, and I'll label that. And then it says seven sixths. Well, this number line here is split into six, so let's count seven sixths. One six, two six, three six, four six, five six, six six, seven sixths. If I'm comparing these two fractions here, which one is greater? Well, it looks like to me that four thirds is greater than seven six because seven six only goes to right here. Okay, try that with 10 and 11 on your own. Okay, now G day particularly asked me just a little bit about number 12 and number 12 is similar to what we did yesterday with number five. It's asking you to look at the points on the number lines above and to figure out for um, for yourself what point that they're at. So it says the directions specifically say, write the fraction or mixed number for each lettered point above. Describe any pattern you see with the class. Now, since we're online, it's gonna be hard to describe the pattern you see, but we can still look out for those patterns and see what we think. So let's first start with point number A, or sorry, point letter A. And we figured out earlier, okay, a is in thirds, so we're having three equal parts between zero and one. So one third, two thirds, three thirds. Let's label that one third, two thirds, three thirds. Fabulous, I know that A is at one third. Now, because A is between zero and one, I actually don't have an option of writing a mixed number because I haven't gotten to a whole number yet. But when I'm looking at B, I have gotten to a whole number. I'm at one between one and two. So let's keep counting here. 
one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, six thirds. So B is at five thirds. If I wanted to do that as a mixed number, I can start at one and one third, one and two thirds, one and three thirds. So one and one third, one and two thirds, one and three thirds. Now three thirds is a whole, so that's why it's the exact same as two. So I could either have five thirds or one and two thirds. Let's skip C for now because I'm still working with my thirds and let's skip on, maybe we'll do a little more of a challenging one. Let's pop over to H and H is on our third number line here. So we talked earlier about how this is split into ninths. So let's look a little more closely. If I'm looking at H, I can see I'm between the whole numbers of one and two. So let's first find our improper fraction. So one ninth, two ninths, three ninths, four ninths, five ninths, six ninths, seven ninths, eight ninths, nine ninths, that's my one whole. Let's keep going, 10 ninths, 11 ninths, 12 ninths, 13 ninths, 14 ninths. I've got 15 ninths. Do you see how I'm kind of drawing little bumps between each one? That helps me keep track and I would really highly encourage you to do that as well. Draw out your little bumps so that you can see how what they look like. So my improper fraction for H is gonna be 15 ninths. Now let's look and see if I can figure out what my mixed number is. So I know that once I get to one whole, I'm gonna start going one and, and I'm gonna start over at one ninth. So one and one ninth would be my first one right there, which is the same thing as 10 ninths. So one and one ninth, one and two ninths, one and three ninths, one and four ninths, one and five ninths, one and six ninths, so one and six ninths, one and seven ninths, one and eight ninths, one and nine ninths, one and nine ninths is two wholes. If I were gonna keep counting with my mixed numbers, I would say two and one ninth, two and two ninths, two and three ninths, and so on and so forth. So for letter H, you could have 15 ninths or one and six ninths. Okay. Number 13 now is asking you instead of to find each one of our fractions, um, it's asking you to place the fraction on the number line. And you'll notice that there are some different denominators here. We've got fifths, tenths, and halves. So looking just quickly, and we're gonna go over this in our live chat tomorrow as well. If I'm looking between zero and one, I can split this equally into tenths, into fifths, and into halves. Let me show you how I'm gonna do that. If you look really carefully, do you notice that these guys are the smallest little tick? I'm gonna count with the smallest little tick, every single tick, tick from zero to one. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've split between zero and one into 10 equal parts. Now, do you see how this little tick right here is just a little bit bigger? Let's skip and only count the big tick marks now, okay? So one, two, three, four, and five. Five, is um, another way that we can split between zero and one. So we can use tenths with our blue there and fifths with our orange. But wait a second, I know 10 can be split in half. So let's see if we can find the half. Well, half of 10 is gonna be five so I'm gonna count over five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Now I found halves by doing every five. So this one right here is gonna be my halves. 
I want you to give it your best shot. See if you can place some of these points. If you don't get it and you're struggling, that is a-okay. We're gonna go over this again tomorrow, okay? So work on the practice book pages, do your lesson check, um, and then we will review this tomorrow. No, this is a hard lesson and it's okay to struggle. The coolest thing about distance learning is that if you wanna go back and watch this video again, be my guest. I'd love that. Have a great day, guys. Keep working.